Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today I'm going to be using the Books and Botanical stamp set to make this really pretty little simple card. So if you want to see how I did it, then just keep watching. So we're going to be using the stamp set from the Gorgeous Books and Botanicals, but I really want to play with some watercolours with this because the, the design of the flowers just lends itself, in my opinion, really, really nicely. Uh, two watercolors. So the first thing we're going to do is grab out our watercolor pad. So this is just a Canson one. You can see here I've been playing with all the different kinds of watercolors because obviously I can use, I'm going to use my, um, I think it's Mungo, I think that's how you say it, uh, watercolor pans today, but you could use Distress Oxide that's been watered down. You could use Tombows. There are so many different ways to do watercolor. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of this, well a page of this, grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut a strip of this off here first and that's because we're going to do the die cut shape first and that's where our sort of stamping is going to be and then we're going to work backwards from there. So I'm going to grab these uh, stitch circle dies from Paper Rose. You don't have to use a stitch circle nor do you have to use ones from Paper Rose but these are the ones that I've got. I'm just grabbing then the stamp set and I want to use this sort of rounded one with the leaves and the flowers. And I'm just checking that that's the right size. You don't want it to be any bigger or any smaller. So it's not gonna, uh, you know, we'll go this one. So I'm gonna use this one here. And I'm gonna cut one of these dies out, one of these, yeah, dies out. Is that the right word? I don't know. Just grabbing a little bit of tape just to hold it still. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this through my die cut machine and I'll be right back. All right, so just pull that bit off. Just gentle with the washi, there we go. So that's sort of our, I guess the, where we're starting with this. So I'm gonna grab that stamp back in and just grab my ink, not my ink pad, my stamp block. I'm just lining that up on here. So we're gonna do two. Now this doesn't quite sit circular. It kind of sits a little bit V-shaped. So what I'm doing is just pulling this out just a little bit just to try and get a little bit more rounded. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly rounded, but I think it helps. Now for my stamping, I'm using my Versafine on, on inks, I hate that word, black ink. Uh, my Memento tends to bleed a little bit with watercolors, so therefore I'm gonna use this because I know it doesn't bleed with my watercolors. I'm just inking that up. And the only downside is it is such a wet ink that it just picks up the dark edges a little bit so I just like to just get off a little bit there we go so we'll try that so all I did is just removed a little bit of the ink there and just stamping that out that's not too bad so see how it's just a little bit blurred around the corners it's not so bad because we are using watercolors with this but it just doesn't have the same crisp as it does on the edge and I just I don't quite know why so if someone knows why please let me know just going really lightly on the edge there it's still gonna do it oh well so then we'll finish the little circle off around this way there we go. So there's at least our impression to begin with the second one wasn't as bad I'll just clean that one off and we're going to put that off to the side just to dry for a little bit because I need that to be as dry as it can be before we start playing with watercolours. While that's doing that, we're going to get that other bit of watercolour paper in. And I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. And this is going to end up being our card, like the actual card size. So I want to do it a little square card just for something different. So this little circle is about... So about six mil, maybe just a little bit more than six mil. So I'm gonna make this 10 by 10. And that's gonna be sort of like the front of the card. So I'll just measure that out. So that's our card base, like the base of the, lost my circle, there she is. So that's gonna be the background, and then we just need, behind that, I'm gonna put another bit of cardboard. Originally I thought I'd do like a watercolor kind of thing behind it. I think now I'll use a little bit of green cardboard and that might do what I want it to do. 
So to do the background, I'm going to put some splatters on here. Now you guys know how much I love playing with splatters. But I just this is a really simple card and I want the I want the color on the flowers to be kind of the star of the show. So I don't want to go too over the top with my background colors. So for that reason, I'm just going to grab a little bit of water. Just spray that up on here. I have a clean brush, which is the first at that time that that's ever happened. And I'm just grabbing some blue because I'm going to do the flowers in blue anyway. So I'm just grabbing some blue up on the brush and then bringing it over to my little palette thing over here. Do the same thing again. Getting as much colour as I can pick up. You can also do this with a water brush pen if you didn't want to use the um, use the paintbrush. Just looking at that thinking, is that the cornflower blue I want? Yes it is, it is. I'm just going to add a little bit more water because you want this to be soupy soupy. And then we're just going to flick this on here. So you guys have seen me do this a bazillion times, but it's so much fun. I'm just moving that well out of the way because I don't want any ink to get on that whatsoever. So I'm just splattering this. It's going all over my face. If you guys could see my face right now, it's it's a little bit, you know. There you go. So I don't want to go too over the top. You just want enough so that it's got that little pattern behind it. And I'm actually going to leave that soup word soupy mix over there so that I can use it when I'm painting. And I'm going to grab my heat tool in and just blast this just to try and get that colour, that design to stay exactly as it is. So leave that off to the side to dry for now. We'll come back to that afterwards. So for the next bit I'm actually going to grab out my water brush pen which is a little bit messy at the moment I just realised. What was I doing with it? So I've got some water in here and I'm going to use it to pick up this little soupy mess in a minute. But I want to put some water on here first because I find you get a much better kind of watercolour painting thing happening when you've already got water on here. So I'm just wiping that off so I don't get any speckles on it. So I've got the clean brush, so clean water coming out of that. And we're just going into the flower very gently because you don't want to put too much water on here. You just want to put just enough to kind of wet the paper. So do the same thing on both of the flowers and then we'll come in, we'll pick up the little bit of paint. So again, it's gonna be very, very light and we're gonna work out. So just by doing that little bit of roundy roundy, it kind of gets the point. It does what you want it to do because you're pushing it out with that water that's already on the page. If you get a little bit too much, so here I feel like I've got a little bit too much water, grab yourself your cloth or a tissue or whatever you want to use just pick it up and just dab it because you can build this color up really nicely so I'm trying to pick it up wherever I can here just the color and not adding any more water to it and then a second once this one's dry uh, I'm gonna add some more color straight out of the pan so I'll leave that one to dry a little bit over there I'm just picking up clean water there just in case this was a bit dry it is a little bit on the empty side, this brush pen, but that's okay. We'll do the same thing with this one. So picking up that little bit of blue, working out and letting it move itself more than you actually painting it in. A little bit of the outside being white is not a bad thing. It kind of gives us this nice unfinished look. She's just really pretty with watercolours. Okay, so there's the two blues. Now I'm tempted to just add a little bit more dark blue coming straight out of the pan which has gone a little bit dry just a little bit more dark blue in the middle it's really not coming up what's going on just a little bit darker on the middle and again if you sort of make it too much you can pick up really easily watercolor with your brush pen and just move it around a little bit and I'm just leaving it a little unfinished Alright, so I'm going to hit that with the heat tool and then decide if I want to add any more blue before we move on to the green. I think that's okay. I don't think I need to add any more to it. I think it's got just enough blue. So in that case, we're going to wipe off the blue. Make sure we dribble all the blue water out of the pen. We can start playing with some greens. So I want this to look a little bit country, so I don't want anything too 
vibrant with my greens and I'm not quite sure exactly what kind of colors I've got here so I'm just bringing a little bit of a couple of different colors up here just to decide which one I want I think I want this one so wipe that off I'm gonna work straight out of the pan for this one so put a little bit more water in there so it's all soupy and then got the clean brush back just gonna put a little bit of water just right in the real middle of these leaves and that's because I want to be able to push the paint out so I know we're working on a really small area here so it's hard to see so hopefully Ryan can zoom right right in but just putting a little bit of water in all of those little leaves and then we can go in with just an itty little bit of the green and just sort of move that around in that water pile damn it's not quite dark enough now I never quite like to make decisions on, on darkness and stuff with watercolours until I've got them all in and then I can always add more paint to kind of make the dark. Sometimes I find they dry a little darker than they go on with. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off all of these leaves and again I'm, I'm doing that kind of not quite finished look on all of them because it just, I don't know, it just brings something with the watercolour not quite finishing it off on all of the leaves and then we'll flip around to the other side and I'll be right back here that when I've dried that off has just gone a lot lighter than I'd like so I'm just going back into those just adding a little bit more color but overall that's actually be exactly the color I was looking for so I'm really happy with that part of it and sometimes with watercolors it is it's a it's a one one try two try three tries until you get the color build up that you want so for the sentiment I'm gonna grab back out another bit of watercolor we're going to put this same cornflower blue as a bit of a wash. So for that reason, I'm going to grab out that big paintbrush again. I probably should have done this before I cleaned it all up. I kind of forgot about it, so it's all good. So grab that colour blue we were using before. A lot of it. And then with a wash, the way I find it easier to do, easiest to do, is get your paper wet first. Now you can do that with two different, there's lots of different ways to do it, but the way ways I like to is either spray the thing, spray the paper that you want to use, and then you can wash over the top, or grab yourself a big paintbrush first, wash it over, and then bring your other paintbrush in. Because I can only find one paintbrush at the moment, I'm just going to spritz it with some water. It's going to do this warpy thing, but that's okay. And then we're going to grab, just because I've got ink on my fingers, I'm just wanting to just not get too much on here. So we're going to do this, we're going to wash all the way along because it's already got the water on it, it makes it really really easy to do and if you just feel like there's too much, not enough water on there, the paper's a bit dry, just spritz it again. And we're just trying to get that real wash thing happening. You don't need to go all the way down the page either because we don't have that much sentiment to do. And get it to look really wishy-washy. You can just keep adding more water to it if it doesn't look too much or if it's too dark. So I kind of think that bit at the top maybe is a little bit too much but down here at the bottom I've kind of got the look I want so I might just use the bit at the bottom. So I'm gonna put that off there for a sec, clean up the mess and then we'll dry that page off. I'm going to do some heat embossing on here. So, I grab out. Our powder tool is the first and most important thing because we don't want this, especially considering it's had water on it. Pardon me. Uh, we don't want anything sticking to this that it shouldn't be. So, grab your powder tool out. Go to town. 
make sure there's nothing going to stick there at all. Then we're going to grab the Versamark ink. I'm going to grab one of my new stamp sets. So this one's called Butterfly Kisses from Lawn Fawn. And I just want to use just this sentiment here that says you are in my thoughts. I just think it's absolutely perfect for a little, like a classic little card like this. It's got nothing, nothing too big about it. It's a very understated card in every possible way. And I think that's going to help this sort of sentiment work really nicely. I'm actually just having a thought. I'm just looking at this and wondering if it's just a little bit too plain and if I need to put like a backer behind this, which was my original thought. But I'll, I'll do the stamping first and then I'll come back and see if I want to use it. So we've got the You Are In My Thoughts. Grab my little ink block. Now because we're this is one big sentiment and I want to do it in a couple of little squarey sentiments, we're going to just mask what I don't want off stamp it out and then because we're going to be cutting it anyway it's not gonna not gonna be too difficult so i'm just grabbing a little bit of this tape this washi and i have not been getting along for a little while so i don't mind that i'm wasting it so i'm going to stamp off stamp off i'm going to mask off anything past you are so that in my thoughts is all getting covered up and you can do this by cutting the sentiment as well either all works so it's not a big deal Ink it up the same way you always would. Then you pull off that washi. And get rid of that. And then we've got the UR and then nothing else is on here. So if I stamp the UR part, that's all I'm gonna get. Now obviously you can't see that because it's clear sticky ink, so you're not gonna see a thing. And then we need to do the same thing with the In My and Thoughts. Going to stamp them down underneath each other the whole way along. Just trying to cut a little bit more off there so I don't have to do that again next time. So I've got the in my part and stamped off the you are part. Making sure you don't go over the top of where that other bit was. Actually, just a bit of a brain wave that's just jumped at me. I'm just gonna put that down. Just gonna put the embossing powder down now while I'm thinking of it, just so it sticks. And then I'll be able to see it better as well, so. Don't have to heat them all up at once. Um, heat them all up separately, but just at least get the powder on, just so it doesn't dry off. So I'll go back to the In My. I'm a little worried that the, the UR bit's gonna show up here. I did clean it off, but sometimes a little bit of that residual sticky sticks around. So it's done it a little bit. But what you can do is just grab yourself a clean paintbrush and just anywhere there's not supposed to be embossing powder, and I know it's really hard to see here because it's a really light background but anywhere it's not supposed to be I'm just wiping that off there you go and then we'll do the exact same thing we've just done with the thoughts part of it trimmer. So for this I'm going to cut these down into just little strips of like sentiment strips basically. So I'm just doing it by eyesight. To me it's easier. You could measure it out. Just make sure that they're dry. It's a big part of it. And as much as I can I'm trying to keep them together just for this bit. And then now I can go and, oh, I probably should have done it the other way, but anyway. If you need to use some washi tape to hold this still, you can. In fact, I'd probably encourage it. Ooh. 
Okay, I've cut my U a little bit skinny there, but I think I'll still be able to make that work. I've actually made that way too skinny. So what I'm gonna really quickly do, and I mean really quickly, I'm gonna stamp that out again, the U R on this strip here, and then I can just cut it and it will be fine. So I redid that because the first one I did there wasn't quite what I wanted. But anyway, so I was going to snip these just down into little squares. So you've got in my, I'm just leaving just a little bit of, of space on the edge and just try and keep it as straight as we can. If it's not straight, if it looks a bit odd, I'll fix it up afterwards. the you are in my thoughts sort of in the middle here on some foam tape so the next part I just need to decide is if I want to put that on a wash background as well I think I don't I think I want to leave it so for this bit it's gonna put this bit the circle down with use foam tape for the circle as well so I'm gonna use a wide or a thick wash thick foam tape for the circle and then for the sentiment I'm just going to use a thinner kind of less thick foam tape. You want it to be as solid as you can have it but don't go too over the top. It doesn't have to be perfect, no one's going to see it anyway. There go. Just remove the backing paper on those bits and we're going to mount this as close to the centre as we can but just I wanted to be really clever, I'd do it this way. So let's see. I'm just using that, those markings on the glass mat as a bit of a guide. It's pretty close. Grab our other bit of foam tape here. We'll get these sentiment bits ready to go. I'm just fixing the R, it's just a little bit wide on one side. Now the sentiment is really little, I'm not gonna argue that, and I probably should have done it in black instead of white but I just wanted a bit more subtle to it which is why I thought the white would look better but I probably should have done it in black that would have matched the um, the ink on the flowers and things as well so there you go it's gonna be you are in my thoughts just like that and you can have it either straight or you can sort of have it slightly off center whichever you prefer it off just to put it in the card. I'm going to grab this paper pad. This is from Kmart. This has got a beautiful kind of dark green that's almost the same shade as the leaves. So I think it's going to really pop on the back here. So if I do it like that and mount it up, so this will be the inside of the card as well. So because of that, we're going to cut this to 11 centimeters, which is going to give us a 1 or 0.5 millimeter mat the whole way around. Cut that off. And then we'll get the scoreboard in. And we'll score this at 11 centimetres. Now obviously my scoreboard is in inches. So I'm just going to grab my ruler and just measure where 11 centimetres is. So just really lightly mark that. I always like to mark both sides when I'm doing a card base just so I don't mess it up. Line that up in here, fold that over and then cut off the excess. So just make sure that lines up straight. I'll cut off a little bit at the bottom. Okay, a little bit of, it was a little bit bigger than I thought, but that's okay. I was expecting a much smaller mat than that, but that'll be fine. Put glue all the way around the outside. Just make sure I want it. I want it to fold up. Sometimes you, obviously you can do it that way, but I like folding up cards. Again, just making sure that's sort of even all the way around. There we go. And I'm just deciding if I want to put just 
one of these little flowers on the inside just to sort of add something to it. Let's go and grab that ink pad thing again. Grab one of the flowers and I'm going to do this in just some peel paint distress oxide just so it's like a tone on tone kind of thing. And just put a little bit down here in the corner. It's very, very subtle, but it's very, very pretty. It would actually make a really pretty background doing this if you did that all over the page. Oh, ideas. And then just, no, I know, I could, I could keep going. I could make this a whole big thing. I would love to use this gorgeous stamp here up on that corner. It would look gorgeous. But I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it like that because it is so simple and understated and just so beautiful. I really love that. That turned out better than I thought. It was a little bit hard. And I do think I should have done the you are in my thoughts in black instead of in white. But I'd love to hear what you think. So please let me know. Leave me a comment down below. I really love this kit from Planners Anonymous. I haven't used it as much as I should have. For whatever reason, I just haven't got to it. But I do really like it. So I'd love to see projects that you've made with it too. So make sure you do tag me um, or at me in any of your projects because I'd love to see them. So just as a last little detail. So in, you know I've got the stitching all the way around the outside of this circle. I'm going to add some faux stitching just to the outside of the green, just to tie it together. So I'm just using a jelly roll pen, so just a white one, and just hand drawing in stitches just around the outside of the watercolour paper panel. Now I'm just doing them freehand, I'm not doing it with a ruler, and I'm just trying to keep it as straight a line as I possibly can, and then obviously trying to make them still look nice. I do find jelly roll pens, this one's not so bad, but some other white ones are a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, inconsistent with how they put their ink down. This one's really good, so I don't have to worry about it quite so much. But just trying to make sure they're the same length and then a straight line. There we go. It just ties it together a little bit more, I think. I hope this inspired you at least a little bit. This is another one I made. This is when I was practicing. I kind of made this congratulations card instead I, I like them both. I think this one's cooler because it uses that space in the middle and I like the darker blue. But this one worked out really nicely as well and it's another card for another occasion that I really, really like. So let me know which one you like best. I hope you guys enjoyed this little stamping video using Planners Anonymous. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to be subscribed and follow me on all of my social medias. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic, fantastic rest of your day and I will see you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.